Chester County Board of Commissioners meeting on uh, today, April 18th. Um, before I start with the uh, agenda, would uh, you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would ask uh, any of you who have your cell phones on to please mute them. Uh, I sometimes forget to do that, so uh, if I remind you, then I'm reminding myself. <laughs> then I'd better do that. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, Mr. Clerk. Copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is located on the wall through the hearing room. Additionally, a copy of all written material to be discussed at today's open meeting is available from the county clerk's staff. The material can also be viewed on the county's website at lancaster.ne.gov. Agenda item one are minutes. Approve the minutes of the Board of Commissioners meeting held on Tuesday, April 11th, 2017. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the minutes of April 11. Any discussion? Call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. Number two are claims. Approval of all claims processed through April 18th, 2016. Or, sorry, 2017. Yeah. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we accept, uh, approve all the claims uh, through April 18th. Any discussion? Call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. Number three is a special presentation recognizing April 24th, April 21st, 2017, as Newman United Methodist Church Day. Gene Crump, Board of Trustees, New Newman United Methodist Church, 125th Anniversary Committee. Want to come up, Gene? Thank you, County Commissioners. I'd like to introduce two other members of our, our church, Patricia Shepard and Joan Rich. Uh, they are retired educators in the city of Lincoln and uh, they have been steadfast members of uh, Newman United Methodist Church, and we appreciate the attention uh, that this day brings to us and your recognition also of our 125th anniversary. We've been in the Lincoln community at least 125 years, and before that, we might not have been members of Newman, but we were members of a church, or we broke off from uh, Quinn Chapel and started our own church. Uh, and there's been a great history to Newman, with uh, Mrs. Bullock, uh, Mr. Bullock, Mr. Eddington, to name a few, and, and those names are familiar, I think, to the city of Lincoln and to this board. And uh, we're remembering those people and uh, the future of our church with our young people. So we thank you for the uh, present presentation and the recognition of the 125 years of Newman United Methodist Church. Uh, it is one of the big problems churches have today is uh, reaching out and recruiting young people and keeping them interested in church. Are you doing better than most, or do you think uh, you are? We're sort experiencing of in the, the same uh, problems, and we look at it as a challenge to our church to bring in young people, and we <clears> have a vibrant young persons program with the Sunday school and with the activities we do for our children. And uh, we have children that are participating in various uh, sports leagues that, that are age appropriate for the children. So we believe we're trying to do the right thing for our children to give them both the spiritual education and the vitality of being in Newman. You think the, the, the younger people um, attack, are really are impressed by the history of Newman? I'd like to think so. I don't think they are appreciative mm -hmm. of the understanding of what being in a church for 125 years means. So in 10 or 15 years, they'll realize 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we celebrated the 125th anniversary. But they understand the vibrancy of the church for them uh, as an indicator of 
growing, learning, and maturing. Okay, well, 1892, it's been quite a while ago since this church was established. Yes. And anyway, I think that in that 125 years, you have, your church has had a tremendous impact upon the faith community and upon just uh, um, no. the general well-being of the community. And so, uh, and with the educators that are there, I'm sure that you do have an impact upon the young people, okay? And so congratulations on the 125 years. Thank you. We'll have the clerk read that uh, resolution if you have it. This is a matter of recognizing April 21st, 2017 as Newman United Methodist Church Day. Whereas Newman Methodist Episcopal Church was established in Lincoln, Nebraska on April 3rd, 1892, and whereas it was organized by nine families, Curtis, Bedell, Washington, Collins, Walker, Chrisman, Robertson, and McCowan, who are four former members of Quinn Chapel AME Church in Lincoln, Nebraska, and whereas Newman's first pastor was Reverend T.G. Porter, and whereas Newman had several locations in Lincoln, Nebraska, from 10th and K Streets, 9th and N Streets, 7th and J Streets, 23rd and S Streets, and its present site at 23rd and R Streets, and each home for Newman and its congregation was filled with fellowship, love, communion, stewardship, and civic responsibility. And whereas Newman was a member of the Central Conference, uh, a conference compromised of African American churches, but when the Central Conference was dissolved in 1968, Newman affiliated with the United Methodist Church, and whereas Newman UMC and its congregation have produced many city, state, national, and international contributors that have enriched and continue to improve the fabric of the arts, government, civic responsibility, philanthropy, community betterment, race relations, education, religion, and whereas Newman UMC and its current lay pastor John Goldridge has led and continued to inspire and move his flock with divine guidance and love and an appreciation for his fellow man and women as they express their needs and wants for spiritual nourishment and growth. And whereas in recognition of Newman United Methodist Church's 125th anniversary of steadfast and faithful service to our community, that April 21st, 2017 should be declared as Newman United Methodist Church Day in Lancaster County. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of Lancaster County, Nebraska, that April 21st, 2017 is hereby declared as Newman United Methodist Church Day in Lancaster County, Nebraska, date of this 18th day of April 2017 by the Lancaster County Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, we will move now to item 5A, which relates to this resolution. This is under new business, isn't it? This is a resolution in a matter of recognizing April 21st, 2017 <coughs> as Newman United Methodist Church Day. Move approval. Okay. That one will be a second. I know, second. <laughs> right, we, have, uh, we have a motion and a second to approve this resolution. Any discussion? All right, call the roll. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Congratulations, Gene. Thank you, thank I, you very I much. I hope it's a year of celebration. Well, we've got three events planned, so that's the start. <laughs> and we'll look at it uh, April of 2018 and see how we did. Okay. <laughs> Is one of those events a supper with collard greens? I don't know, I, I, I know the menu, it's Friday. <laughs> It's no college. No. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next is number four, public hearings. 4A is a manager application for Shell Wright in connection with a class one liquor license for Miller Long VFW Post 3606 at 3340 West A Street, Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay, if I could get you to raise your hands, I'll give you the oath here. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. All right, I hereby open the hearing on item 4A and invite you to identify yourselves. My name is Ed Hoffman. I am the uh, post quartermaster. Also, I am the uh, co-chairman for the Lincoln Memorial Day Observance Association, Brigadier General Almondson over there knows who I am. 
I'm the bookkeeper out there, the one that handles all the paperwork. And I'm Cheryl Wright. I'm the person who has been asked to be the canteen manager out there. And uh, I do other volunteer work, too. Besides this, I'm also with League of Women Voters. I've seen Bill Avery down at the, at the uh, courthouse, be, at the uh, legislature before. And um, also work with the, the Legion and the VFW. Well, welcome. Thank you. Any questions? Deb? Cheryl, have you served in this capacity before, or is this a, a new opportunity for this you? This is a new, a new job. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> have you had any specific training or? Just online. OK. Yes, I took all the online courses that were required. Great. Thank you. Very OK. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. We will uh, take this up at a future okay. time. I will say this, that uh, in uh, choosing Cheryl, we, the executive board at, at our VFW post, we, um, we had very few people willing to volunteer their time. And so when Cheryl was um, pointed out, we just, you know, we jumped at the, the idea. You know, it didn't matter if it was a man or a woman because it doesn't matter. And, you know, just whoever can push the button, so to speak, they can do it. And I live half a uh, mile from the building. <laughs> yes, and she's, she's extremely close because we've had the fortunate uh, luck of not really having a lot of problems out there. And my wife and I, we, um, unfortunately, we chose to build at 94th and Adams. And so it takes me about about 30 minutes yeah. to get out to the, the club when we have an alarm go off. And sometimes it does happen due to power failure or somebody forgets to lock the door and the wind kind of opens it up. Cheryl lives approximately about two and a half minutes oh. from the club. So she's, uh, she makes it possible that uh, we can make Terry Wagner's job just a little bit easier. I want to thank you folks for allowing us to come up here this mm -hmm. morning. You bet. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Let me correct myself. Uh, we do have a correlating item uh, with this um, subject. Uh, let's take care of that now, Mr. Clerk. Did you want to close the, close the public hearing first? Before we vote? Yeah. Well, we've got another item. So we'll move to the next item. Okay. okay. Next is uh, Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department amendments to sections 1, 4, 5, 9, 20, 22, 25, and 34 of Article 2 of the Lincoln Lancaster County Air Pollution Control Program regulations and standards. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Members of the board, uh, my name is Scott Holmes. I manage the Environmental Health Division with the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department. Um, today, what we have before you are some updates primarily of our uh, air regulations. Uh, many of you know that the air regulations are adopted jointly by both the city and the county and serve the entire area uh, as one unit of regulations. Um, in addition, all such regulations, of course, go through our Air Pollution Control Advisory Board prior to going to our Board of Health and then uh, come to our elected bodies for action. Uh, the Air Pollution Control Advisory Board uh, voted unanimously in favor of these, as did the Board of Health. Um, the primary changes in the uh, <coughs> regulations are uh, updates that bring the regulations uh, in con uh, consistent or make them consistent, more consistent with Title 129, which is the state regulations, and with EPA federal regulations. Our regulations have to be at least as stringent as the federal regulations. Um, so I'm going to walk through them real quickly. Uh, just uh, briefly and then touch on the one that really has more of a policy implication. Um, the first section is uh, Article 2, Section 1, and those are simply changes which are changes to uh, definitions. And uh, one of those relates to the uh, primary uh, issue that we'll talk about relative to construction permits. Article 2, Section 4 uh, updates the ozone standard to the 2015 ozone standard that's the national standard and uh, that has been adopted by DEQ as well. Article 2, Section 5 uh, modifies uh, simply the definition of um, solid waste. Uh, historically, human and animal remains were called solid waste in the code. EPA felt that was inappropriate, so we've changed that. 
Article 2, Section 9 relates to uh, construction permits and the authority to issue those uh, with a single public notice. Historically, there's two kinds of air permits. One is an operating permit, so an existing source typically has an operating permit, a larger business in town, some of our industries, for example. Every five years, those permits have to be renewed. Um, but we also issue what are called general operating permits. So a good example of that would be our rural elevators. They have to have a permit. We issue those once every five years under a single public notice for all of them. Um, the construction permits have been different, though. Uh, they have required us to, every time we issue a construction permit, we've been required to do a public notice, which is a 30-day period of time in which the public has option to make comment. We've honestly never received a single comment over the 20 plus years that we have been doing this. And an example would be uh, emergency generators. Every time a larger business expands, they often add a generator so that they can operate certain portions of that business if we have power outages. And we issue several of those every year, and each one of those requires a separate publication of a public notice, and the emission potential of such uh, generators is just tiny. Um, we looked at other source types that we thought we could potentially do this with, uh, and we identified three others. One is rock crushing plants, uh, another is concrete batch plants, and the last would be crematoriums. Um, each of these have very minimal likelihood of emissions that would affect public health, but they are regulated, and uh, our goal in the change is to be able to issue a single uh, point in time permit for the type of emissions that might occur. Um, if it's in a situation that may pose a, a potential public health risk that the health director identifies, she or he can pull that back and uh, have a public hearing on that, or public meeting, and uh, I'm sorry, a public notice on that specific uh, uh, source. So that's the primary policy change. Um, section 20 is uh, just making revisions to make them consistent with Title 129 DEQ regulations. 22 is changing a typographical error. Uh, section 25, again, uh, consistency with DEQ regulations. And finally, Section 34, which just changes how we worded things so that um, the word certified in this particular section uh, means that it's been certified for accuracy and completeness just to provide clarity to our regulated sources. Um, the primary reason that we're making the changes that we propose today uh, have to do with consistency with state regulations and federal regulations. And then as well on the construction permit change, we're making that change to improve our customer service to speed up the issuance of those permits and also reduce the staff uh, time, which makes our staff more efficient. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Questions? Don't see okay. any. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have anyone in the audience who would like to address us in support of this resolution? Any opposition? Any neutral testimony? That closes the hearing then on um, item 4, A and B. So now we'll move Mr. Clerk to the actual resolutions for consideration. Uh, under new business, 5B is a resolution regarding the corporate manager liquor license application of Cheryl Wright in connection with the Class 1 liquor license for Miller Long VFW Post 3606 at 3340 West A Street, Lancaster County, Nebraska. Move approval. Second. <laughs> then move to second that we uh, approve this resolution um, involving uh, the Class 1 liquor license for Miller Long VA Post. Nope, sorry, VFW Post. Okay. Any discussion? Call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. C is a resolution regarding amendments to sections 1, 4, 5, 9, 20. 22, 25, and 34 of Article 2 of the Lincoln Lancaster County Air Pollution Control Program regulations and standards. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the resolution regarding amendments to sections 1, 4, 5, 9, 20, 22, 25, and 34 of Article 2. Any discussion? Call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? 
Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. D is a resolution in a matter of transferring appropriations from the general fund miscellaneous budget to the general fund county court budget. The amount to be transferred is $214,000. All right. Morning. Good morning. Dennis Meyer, County Budget and Fiscal Officer. Uh, the resolution this morning is, is kind of a resolution to, to really start the process of finishing up the budget for our fiscal year that ends June 30th. Uh, the, the resolution is, is coming forward today because of the timing of expenditures that we are having in our, in our county court budget. Um, just a, a reminder for everybody, when we met um, a few months back for our mid-year budget review, when we looked at projected numbers, uh, the county court expenditures at that time were, it was really the, the budget that was kind of standing out because of some of our legal fees and our guardian ad litem costs. Uh, those, those costs that we were projecting out have, are still really on pace that they were. So with that um, in mind, this resolution will transfer uh, authority from our $2 million contingency over into our county court budget to allow for our expenditures to be covered under the Nebraska Budget Act. I have a question for you, Dennis. Okay. Um, a portion of this, rather large portion, is the uh, court system? Or not. Yeah, I mean, this resolution here is strictly for the county court. Do they have any discretion at all in how they spend the money that's appropriated? Um, you know, on, on the couple items that are, are giving them issues, the, the legal fees and the guardian ad litems, I would say they have very, I, I would say they don't have much discretion at all on those. Um, th those are costs that, depending on the activity for the year, um, that activity and those court cases are going to drive the costs for both of those types of items. So it it's, it's one of those items that if you go back and take a look at over the, the probably the last 10 years that I've been here, court, or the, the legal fees <clears throat> and stuff are always one of those topics of discussion that we've either tried to squeeze at the beginning, hoping that we'd have a good year and, um, and stuff like that. So we, we try to, to, to make that number work for the budget. Sometimes it just doesn't, you know, we roll the dice and then I show back up here saying, you know what, we rolled the dice and it just didn't work. Those costs still, still were out there. And now we're just, um, coming back to reality saying, these are our costs that we, we need to pay, so we need to transfer the authority. Does this happen about every year? I would say yes, it does. It might depend, it might depend on the court, yeah. but um, I would assume later on when I come back, uh, district court will probably have a number there too. So it just kind of depends on the court and the activity, but uh, I'm talking about one of the courts on an annual basis. Thank you. You bet. Any questions? No. Right, move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, approve the resolution of transferring appropriations. Um, call the roll. Shore. Yes. Brinkman. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Avery. Yes. Motion carries four to zero. E is a resolution accepting Brian Health's bid of $3,185,000 for property generally located at 2201 South 17th Street, Lincoln, Lancaster County, authorizing the chair of the, of the board to execute the attached closing documents and authorizing the chief administrative officer to ex execute on behalf of the board any further documents necessary to complete the closing. Dave Durbin, Deputy County Attorney, Lancaster County Attorney's Office. Um, one small update um, on what the resolution will do, um, because Commissioner Wilchin is out of town uh, for the week, we have updated those to reflect that Commissioner Avery will be signing as the vice chair. Um, these are all related to closing on the sale of the mental health center. Um, closing is tentatively scheduled for the 27th at this point. So we have a resolution authorizing uh, Commissioner Avery to sign the closing documents. Any further documents will be signed by uh, Mr. Egan 
and we're accepting the offer that was put in many, many months ago. <coughs> it's a dated to rejoice. Yes. <laughs> we're, very, we're very close, so I, this mm -hmm. is probably the best resolution we could have seen. We've been waiting for this for a little while. Agreed. Motion? I move approval. Thank you. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, um, approve of this resolution that accepts the Brian Health's bid of $3,185,000 for property. Any discussion of this? No discussion. Call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. 5F is a quick claim deed from Lancaster County to Bryan Health to convey property generally located at 2201 South 17th Street, Lincoln, Lancaster County. Move approval. Second. Been moved and seconded that we um, approve this uh, resolution. Any discussion? Appropriate at this time to thank Bryan Health for their partnership in, in making this possible. Any more? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. G is an addendum to the 2016 to 2018 bargaining agreement between Lancaster County and the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge number 32 under county contract C-16-654 to amend article 22 to include exercise equipment. Move approval. Second. <clears throat> it's been moved and seconded that the addendum to the 2016-18 bargaining agreement uh, be approved. Any discussion? Call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries 4-0. to zero. H is an interlocal agreement with the Village of Hallam for one sheriff's deputy to provide law enforcement services within the corporate limits of the Village of Hallam. Term of the agreement is May 1st, 2017 through April 30th, 2018. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Uh, Terry Wagner, Lancaster County Sheriff. This is an annual agreement we have with the Village of Hallam. We've had it for about 25 years. Um, we generally try to pair up a deputy with the, with the village to determine what their needs of dedicated service are. Uh, the deputies work those agreed upon hours we pay the deputy their overtime rate, Hallam reimburses us for their overtime rate and the vehicle charge. So it, it usually runs about you know, no more than 20 hours per month dedicated services. Any questions? Move approval. Second. Been moved and seconded that we approve this interlocal agreement. Any more discussion? None, call the roll. Shore? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. 5I is, or is a pro professional service agreement between Interspace Studios Limited and Lancaster County on behalf of the Lancaster County Sheriff's Office for services related to renovation of certain portions of the Sheriff's Office space at the property located at 575 South 10th Street. The cost of county is not to exceed $8,100. Work is to be completed on or before June 30th, 2017. Terry Wagner, Lancaster County Sheriff. This is for a remodel in our lower level area to uh, to expand some office space uh, for for one of our units. Um, I'll mention that the uh, the funds here are being paid for out of forfeited assets. Any Move. questions of the sheriff? Move approval. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we approve professional services agreement um, as stated on the agenda. Any more discussion? None. Call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. J is a professional services agreement with Sinclair Hilly Architects to provide architectural services related to the renovation of the property located at 1200 Radcliffe Street, Lincoln, Nebraska. The cost of the county is $94,450. Work is to be completed within 12 months of execution. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded that uh, we approve 
professional services agreement with Sinclair Hilly. Um, any discussion? Bill? I just want to note that this is a project that was not included in the anticipated budget for this year, and this contract is actually, in general, a promise that we're going to spend over a million dollars to renovate this space for EOC. I'm not opposed to the expenditure or the project, but I think we need to note as we look at our budget for next year that we don't have this money in this year's budget. And in talking to Dennis Meyer right now, we're, we are hoping that the sale of Traybert Hall is going to cover this, but if it doesn't, we have to identify where those funds are coming from. It's a concern that I have. I'm not going to oppose the contract, but I think we need to keep that in mind as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And as part of this process, I believe uh, five different locations were considered for the EEOC for the compatibility and the cost impacts to the county, and this is the one that, um, in sharing conjunction with you, the services center, that seems the most promising. Roma. Yeah, and this is actually one where the facility is a hardened facility, essentially, and so it uh, it will also become a permanent spot. Any yeah. other discussion? Do we have a motion, Mr. Clark? Yes, yes. All right, it has been moved and seconded that uh, item J, professional <coughs> services agreement with Sinclair Lewis, be uh, approved. Call the roll. Shore. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. 5K is a professional services agreement between Olson Associates and <coughs> Lancaster County on behalf of the Lancaster County Engineer's Office to perform a Tier 1 site investigation on property located at 110 O Street, Lincoln, Nebraska. The cost of the county is $12,600. Good morning, Pam Dingman, Lancaster County Engineer. Um, a couple weeks ago, I received notice from the DEQ that we had, um, had in, in the past, had a spill, actually back in 1987, on uh, this location when it was the county shop. And so DEQ has now asked us to investigate this site and determine the extent of environmental contamination on it. This is step one of four. All four steps may or may not need to be implemented, but uh, the area that is of concern is the block on 110 West O, um, actually just east of the existing U stop. So again, um, we we are looking for approval of this contract so that we can go ahead and uh, start this process. Any questions for Pam? Uh, I would just ask if the board uh, approves this, that they approve a contingent on receipt of insurance documentation. We are still waiting for the insurance. We just want to move it ahead. And uh, the contractor said once the contract was approved, we would receive our insurance documentation. And this is this is actually a requirement <coughs> that's placed upon us by DEQ. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. What was the type of contaminant? Do you know? Um, I am not aware at this time of all the details. Okay. So um, this is obviously the study to make that determination. Okay. Again, this is something that happened in 1987. So Yeah, 1987, um, I just what I was thinking. <laughs> I was one year out of high school, so. <laughs> I will move approval of the professional services agreement contingent upon the receipt of insurance documentation. Thank you. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve professional services agreement between Olson Associates and Lancaster County. Any, any more discussion? Seeing none, call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. L is a supplement agreement to county contract C 16 151 between Felsberg, Holt, and Ulevig in Lancaster County on behalf of the county engineer to conduct a safety study on Saltillo Road. Additional cost of county under this supplement is $2,900. This one of yours, Pam? That is correct. Uh, Pam Dingman, Lancaster County Engineer. Um, what I have set up on the overhead is an exhibit of the study area. As you may be aware, and this is how <coughs> scopes creep on uh, these type of projects. Some point last year, we went uh, to Department of Roads with a, a safety study of the corridor of Saltillo. Um, Department of Roads later requested that we take the traffic circles out of the study. So we came back to their safety committee with the traffic circles removed from our study. 
and then they asked us if we could add the mile that is in between the end of the South Beltway construction and our jurisdiction that is within the city of Lincoln's jurisdiction. We redid the study and added the mile of jurisdiction. Now, last week when we went to uh, their safety committee again, <coughs> they asked us if we could um, incorporate turn lanes at uh, 38th and 40th Street. So um, with this, I'm really hoping we can get this project moving forward because this is using up really valuable time and it's important that we um, take care of this street because it is it does have dramatic safety concerns for me. Pam, we've, we've looked at a lot of different maps in this area. Um, is this going to have any impact on South Beltway? <coughs> Should it ever get built? Okay, so this is a completely separate issue from the South Beltway. It's completely separate. And I want to continue to emphasize that. It's to address a safety problem that is existing on Saltillo. The South Beltway is a separate project. Funds have been allocated at the state level for the South Beltway. It is currently in environmental review. But the South Beltway will include this portion? No, no, this is absolutely not included in any way within the South Beltway. Okay. However, it does on the east and the west end match up to the, um, the end of the South Beltway project. I will say for the, for the residents of Southern Lancaster County, this is the number one priority project. We get asked about this more than anything else, and I'm glad it's continuing to move forward, be at, at a snail space. Should we be able to continue to move this project forward, it will be a 90-10. So Lancaster County will need to put up 10% of the construction dollars. The state of Nebraska will put up 90% of the construction dollars. We estimate that, um, we've estimated that previously to be about, about $6 million. So this is a significant um, contribution to our program and, and that's why it's so important. Well, I move well, approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we <coughs> approve the supplemental agreement with, with the two contract C-16-0151. Any more discussion? Call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Mm -hmm. Amundsen agreement between Rush Creek Construction, Inc. and Lancaster County on behalf of the Lancaster County Engineer's Office for pipe culvert maintenance at 24 locations in Lancaster County. The cost of the county is $802,257.42. Work is to be completed on or before September 22nd, 2017. Pam Dingman, Lancaster County Engineer. So this is the project I brought for contract approval to you guys um, a couple of weeks ago. We now have all the insurance and all the details that we need for that contract. It's very important we move this project forward. The contractor expects to start on this project in June. Pam, um, will this have any impact on the closed bridges? Um, will it have an impact on the closed bridges? Well, uh, the reality is, is we will have to close these roads while we construct the pipes and we will have to come up with detour routes that um, can make it through these areas that we're constructing on, so. This is a pretty big number, 20, 24. 24 is a big number and the reason that we see a bigger number than you guys have seen in, in the past is that last year I had to delete our pipe program for the year because we did not get the FEMA money in so I had to hold this project, and then of course it had a couple additional pipes added to it in the meantime. So it's important that we get this project going because we did not construct any new pipes last year. Any questions of Pam? Move approval. Been second. We'll here a second. It's been moved and seconded <clears throat> that we approve the agreement uh, between Rush Creek Construction and Lancaster County. Any more discussion? Call the roll. Sure. Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. 5N is a recommendation from, from the purchasing department and the county engineer to award a contract to Constructors Inc. for asphalt and resurfacing projects in 2017. The cost for the base bid plus two accepted alternatives is $5,097,807.23. With an option for additional work in the amount of one million thirty-eight thousand three hundred and two dollars and six cents. 
Pam Dingman, Lancaster County engineer. So last year I had to take money out of my pipe program because we did not receive FEMA reimbursement. This year um, I chose to take it out of the asphalt overlay program because we did not have FEMA reimbursement for the projects that we did um, left over from the flooding of May of 2015. So um, this, this uh, contract has new pavement from uh, Adams from Stevens Creek to 148th Street. We have over 400 cars a day on that road. And of course, that's an area that has become critical to us. However, we have received, since I put this contract out, some additional monies from FEMA. So, and of course, we also received, we also had about $300,000 in savings that we didn't anticipate from the pipe program. So all the extra money I've put into the asphalt program to try to get us whole with, with what I had intended to construct this year. As of yesterday, we received an additional $521,000 from FEMA, and we finally received our $68,000 from Department of Roads for our emergency federal aid fix. Oh, so um, we may be able to go back, and, and I'm gonna kinda hold and hope that we get some more savings in with a, a few of our additional contracts so that we can go ahead and award the stretch of Waverly Road because it really needs to be done this year. Um, if we don't get any more money, I may award a portion of that that would utilize the funds that we currently have because as you're aware, you know, um, our checkbook at the county is just like your personal checkbook. If you don't have the money, you can't spend it. <laughs> Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve this recommendation from the purchasing department and the county engineer to award a contract to Constructors, Inc. Any discussion? Yeah. Pam, can you address the alternates that are part of this? Just give us a description of them and indicate whether those are likely to happen. So um, right now what we are awarding is alternate uh, part 10, which is South 68th Street, which can be seen right here. And we are awarding alternate number um, 11, which is Northwest 112th Street, which into Malcolm, which can be seen here. It's north of uh, Highway 34 into the city. And then what we're holding on is the Waverly Road, which is um, from approximately 77 into uh, 148th. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so Northwest 112th Street is being awarded and will be completed. That is correct. Thanks. Any more questions, discussion? <clears throat> we have a motion, Mr. Clerk. Uh, there is a motion. Do you know additional the request to comment? We'll call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? <clears throat> yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Five O is to authorize Kerry P. Egan, Chief Administrative Officer to the Lancaster County Board of Commissioners, to sign the investment change summary from Prudential Retirement, authorizing Prudential to proceed with changes in the investment arrays for the plan numbers 006371 and 006372, as previously authorized by the Lancaster County Board on March 7, 2017. Move approval. Second. <clears throat> Moved and seconded that we uh, authorize Kerry Egan, the Chief Administrative Officer to this County Board, uh, to sign the investment change summary from Prudential Retirement. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. P is an amendment to County Contract C-16-240 with Jim Peterson Auction Company and the City of Lincoln for auction services to dispose of unclaimed or abandoned property. The amendment extends the contract from May 28, 2017 through September 30, 2017. Lancaster County agrees to pay the auctioneer's fee in the amount of 10% of gross sales for the term of the extension, not to exceed $10,000. A motion? Move approval. approval. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, approve the amendment to county contract C-16-0240. I was just curious if I could ask a question. Is this real estate or what type of 
abandoned property are we auctioning off? And things like that. I believe this is for a surplus property, but I could check with purchasing if you'd like to hold it. I could get you a no. better answer. No, that's I just, <laughs> I'm completely confident in the contract. I was just curious what the property was. Yeah. I'll follow with Bob. Any additional questions, comments? Call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Q is an amendment to kind of contract C-12-181 with Coles Pharmacy and Home Care, Inc. for pharmacy services for general assistance. The amendment renews a contract from April 17, 2017 through April 16, 2018. The cost of the county is not to exceed $450,000. Move approval. Second. Been moved and seconded that uh, item Q, amendment to uh, county contract C-12-0181, be approved. Any additional comments or questions? Call the roll. Shore. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Brinkman. Yes. Avery. Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Or is an amendment to kind of contract C-16-153 with Bug Eaters Pest Control LLC for annual services for pest control. The amendment renews the contract from April 11, 2017 through April 10, 2018. The cost of the county is not to exceed $2,000. Move approval. Second. second. Moved and seconded that uh, item R, amendment to county contract C-16-0153, uh, be approved. Any discussion at all? None? Call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. 5S is a grant, con grant contract with families inspiring families in the amount of $66,413 <clears throat> for their school engagement and suspension diversion with parent support program. Term of the grant contract is January 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2017. Good morning, Sarah with Lincoln Lancaster Human Services. This is a federal grant. It's Title II funding that is passed through the Crime Commission. It's to establish and to continue a program at Southeast uh, High School for youth who display signs of truancy. It's used as a diversion before they're filed on through the county attorney's office. In addition, <coughs> it funds for a full-time staff member at the Youth Services Center. This staff member, they're not a staff member of the Youth Services Center, rather it's a contract, but they contact first-time offenders coming into the Youth Services Center, lets them know about visiting hours, what to expect, and so forth. So it's, it's a pretty um, essential service that we have. I do wanna say too, with Title II funding, the Crime Commission just announced within the last month that they no longer are going to apply for Title II federal funding. In order to receive this funding, there are certain core requirements of the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act that states must adhere to in order to draw down Title II funding. Uh, the, the standards and the compliance monitoring changed within the last year. So the feeling was that Nebraska would be found to be out of compliance as many other states, which would result in a 40% reduction in funding for this. The funding for the state that the state was receiving from Title II was a little over 300,000. Of that, Lancaster County received approximately 120,000. So this is one of those programs that was funded under, under Title II. I just bring this up because there's been a lot of budget cuts lately at the state level, and this is just an additional one that's headed our way. So, so the planning for the program then to expire at the end of the budget year so unfortunately with this program and there was another one too uh, because of staff turnover they weren't able to expend all of their funding and so they had continued their grant award uh, however since they're not going to be in compliance with OJJDP and not follow those core requirements they're returning all of the money on June 30th 2017 so we have to relinquish the funding that we received so at that time you're going to see more applications come in through juvenile justice prevention funds through joint budget committee funds right now I was just reviewing joint budget committee and we're 600,000 over than the budgeted amount 
this we have six hundred thousand dollars in request over the amount that we have to award so we're going to see those on different grant review committees <clears throat> any other questions <coughs> do we have a motion mr clerk not not yet move for approval second it's been moved and seconded that we um approve the grant contract with families <coughs> inspiring families any more discussion call the roll Hamilton. yes shore yes brinkman yes avery yes motion carries four to zero number six is a consent items utility prevent number 1531 allowing windstream nebraska inc to install 350 linear feet a fiber optic cable for new service at 7225 <coughs> West McKelvey Road. There is no cost to the county. Move approval of the consent item. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the consent item. Call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Shore. Yes. Brinkman. Yes. Avery. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Motion carries <laughs> four to zero. Number seven is public comment. Those wishing to speak on items relating to county business non agenda may do so at this time. It is open for public comment. I see none. Okay. Next is announcements. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will tour Trevor Hall at 2201 South 11th Street, Lincoln on Tuesday, April 18th, 2017 at 11 a.m. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold a staff meeting, including department budget hearings, on Thursday, April 20th, 2017, at 8.30 a.m. in a Bill Luxford studio at the County City Building. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold their next regular meeting on Tuesday, April 25th, 2017, at 9 a.m. In, in room 112 of the County City Building. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold department budget hearings on Tuesday, April 25th, 2017, immediately following their regular meeting in the Bill Luxford uh, studio at the County City Building. The County Commissioners can be reached at 402-441-7447 or commission at lancaster.ne.gov. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners meeting is broadcast live. It is rebroadcast on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays on Five City TV, Cable Channel 5. In addition, the meeting may be viewed on the internet at lancaster.ne.gov under Five City TV Video On Demand or Five City TV on YouTube. Move we adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Right now we move into the um, meeting of the Board of Equalization. I hereby open the Board of Equalization meeting on Tuesday, April 18th. A copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is located on the wall at the rear of the hearing room. Additionally, a copy of our material to be discussed at today's open meeting is available from the county clerk's staff. The material can also be viewed on the county's website at lancaster.ne.gov. Also in attendance this morning is Scott Gaines from the county assessor's office. Agenda item one or minutes. Approve the minutes of the Board of Equalization meeting held on Tuesday, April 11, 2017. Move approval. Second. And moved and seconded that we approve the minutes of April 11. Any discussion, alterations, changes? Call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number two are additions and deductions to the tax assessment rolls. Move approval of the, of the additions and deductions to the tax assessment rolls. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve uh, the additions and deductions to the tax assessment rolls. Any discussion? Comments? Call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number three is a public hearing for motor vehicle tax exemption applications. This includes Catholic Social <coughs> Services, Connecting Point Church of the Nazarene, and Nebraska Wesleyan University. I hereby open the public hearing on items 3A, 1, 2, and 3, uh, motor vehicle exemption applications. Anybody here wish to speak on behalf of this in opposition or neutral position? Seeing none, I'll close the hearing. Next is number four, action on motor vehicle tax exemption applications. Move approval. Second. Been moved and seconded that we uh, approve the motor vehicle exemption applications. Any discussion? 
None. Call the roll. Shore. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Brinkman. Yes. Avery. Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number five is public comment. Those wishing to speak on items relating to County Board of Equalization business, non agenda, may do so at this time. Move we adjourn. Second. We have cleared the room. Yes. It's been moved to second that we. I, uh, I didn't hear this. Who seconded? No, I did. Okay. 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 Roll. Amundsen? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Avery? Yes. Motion carries four to zero.